Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Nistro. Talk today about uh, the Philly regional that went on yesterday. It was apparently capped out, and there was a lot of people who got, um, you know, forced to do side events and and, and stuff. So, 650 duelists, I, I believe, was was the maximum. A Philly regional was actually the first one that I ever went to two years ago. That was that was the first regional I, I ever went to, and it, it's it's a big place to do a regional at and it's definitely a, sort of like the peak of competition it's like the closest you can get to like a ycs without actually being at a ycs i believe there was 10 rounds we don't know all the top decks just yet but we do know the three of the top eight placements and the first place which inspired me to make this video was a uh, horus diabel star rescue ace list with a lot of spice in it. So Horus Rescue Ace is already kind of spicy because you're kind of sacrificing non-engine slots to be a little more aggressive with the Rescue Ace engine. So instead of relying on hand traps, you're building a stronger board. And then it doesn't just stop there, right? So first off, we have Fire Engine and Fire Attacker in the main. Fire Engine's kind of like fallen out of favor for me because I hate getting super polyed and this card is just super poly bait. So I've kind of been cutting it from my list. Fire Attacker in the main is great. This, this is actually what I'm doing right now. I've, I put Fire Attacker in the main deck over Fire Engine just because I feel like this comes up in more situations and if it gets removed, you're less worried about it versus where, where if Fire Engine gets removed, it's kind of like you no longer have access to Airlifter. Triple D of Bellstar, and the reason why he's on triple is because he started to play Simple Spools of, of Betrayal Silvera, and I've actually started to use this card in my list too. This past few weeks, I've been testing this card out in Rescue Ace, and it's been amazing. And I think it'll get even better with a new card out of Phantom Nightmare, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So Vera is really cool because you send the Abel Star from Hand or Field to negate any face-up card, and that card is negated permanently. Now, the really interesting thing is that Dia Star, if it's sent to Grave during the opponent's turn, it gets to summon itself back by sending any card from Hand or Field, even face-down cards. Summoning Dia Star and summoning herself back from graveyard both ways to summon her can take any card from hand or field doesn't matter if it's face up face down which really works well with emergency during your turn but also works well to whatever rescue a spell or trap that you feel like you don't need maybe if you don't need king sarcophagus anymore because he's on um the horus package he could send that to revive the diabell star and then that gives you really strong follow-up now i've considered playing three diabell star i've kind of come to figure out that i didn't really want to play three of them because opening multiples does nothing basically like unless i open it and the trap opening multiple of diabell star herself won't really do me much favor so that's why I figured not to go for it, but I can understand why you'd want to play three, especially now that Hydrant's limited. This deck is way more vulnerable to hand traps and you need that extra push to make sure that you always have access into your emergency, into your turbulence um, and into your grind game, you know, with like HQ and stuff. So playing, so being a little aggressive with Triple D of Alstar, I think makes sense. Personally, I think just three is too much, but I can understand why like in this format, in a format without populace or where bonfire isn't a one card starter for us i can see why triple d bell star would be in the list also maining triple super poly horus ratios is only three three mcd one happy this is the best horus ratio i think you can play uh triple king sarcophagus i think this is this is what i never understand about certain horus list is that they're always only on two sarcophagus and triple mcd and I, I'm just perplexed by that because dropping two with Imcity is the is the like riskiest thing you can do. Like you get ashed, you just lose two cards. There's no sort of trade back for that. At least when you open King Sarcophagus, activating an Ash Blossom on Sarcophagus itself is really redundant because it can use this effect three more times that turn. I, I think it, it is better in a lot of situations to open King Sarcophagus, but I can understand why you would still play MCD at three to have access to it, right? So that gives you six slots into it rather than just three. And yeah, so clocking in at 42 cards, this is looking pretty, pretty strong. Even without any hand traps, I like you, you have cards like Impulse that can interact during the opponent's turn. So you're not like completely de devoid of interaction. People just taking out the called by the graves is just monumental to me. Like I, I'm still 
really surprised that people are taking out Call by the Great from their list, but if it works for them, you know, who, who am I to judge? This really looks like a strong going second build, assuming you don't brick on some of the rescue ace spells and traps. And even if you do, right, like even if you draw like Diabelle Star with like Extinguish or like Contain, if you get to Emergency, you can just reset the, the trap cards from Graveyard. So it's really not a big deal to like open your traps in Rescue Ace, especially going second, because Emergency just gets you them back that same turn. So you don't really get punished for discarding them for activating other things in in, in this case would be either Diabelle Star or King Sark. The extra deck looks pretty standard for Rescue Ace list, only throwing in the Zombie Vampire. This is really the only thing that's different. You still have access for your Charmers, your Heat Soul Lines, Link Rebel. The only thing that's missing from here is like Relinquished Anima. That's probably the only thing that's missing. I'd probably put an Anima over, maybe over Dark. I, I just don't think Dark is as strong in Rescue Ace or maybe Selene. But having uh, Diabelle Star at three and having Imcity being a spellcaster at three, Selene really isn't that bad in this deck. So it, it definitely will resolve. And now we we take a look at the side. We see Sprite Sprind is the first thing that you know catches your attention because it's being mixed with a scatter shot for time. Kind of like the combo that I played with the Gigantic Sprite and the Red Resonator. Whereas uh, I guess Scattershot is easier to resolve compared to Red Resonator because Red Resonator, you have to set up Gigantic Sprite plus a Red Resonator in deck. Whereas like even if you just open the Scattershot, you can just discard it with like King Sark or Imcity or Diabelle Star and you'll still be able to resolve it. As a matter of fact, I believe you can still resolve it if you activate Super Poly as well. It's a if trigger effect, so it shouldn't miss timing by any means. And then we see the silent graveyards and i feel like this is the real tech i'm not the biggest fan of the soul release card that people have been playing i think it's just too slow and it doesn't like win you the it doesn't auto win you the game whereas like something like sonic graveyard which is like imperm as a quick uh, not imperm uh dweller as a quick play spell seems in my opinion to be a lot more effective because you can stop them when it hurts them the most and then you know, uh, make your per, uh, push for game. Uh, tier elements can't play their turn if this resolves. Fire Kings just have to pretty much pass turn if this resolves. So it's, and I don't think a lot of people are gonna see this card coming. Maybe now that it's top to regional, people are gonna be paying attention to it. I guess it's a really good card to grab your place out of. And that mix with the Triple Crow is really great. Uh, Bell is good as well, but Crow not being once per turn allows it to like be used in like multiples. Um, Droll is still the most effective hand trap this format. It's it's insane how strong Droll is right now, even against Rescue Ace. It didn't used to be good against Rescue Ace because Airlifter was at three, but now the Airlifter is at one. You, you tend to usually have to search the Airlifter, meaning Droll into into that searched Airlifter is a lot stronger than it used to be. And then Ash Blossom, I guess it's here because it's good against everything. So this is a really solid list. I mean, I, I'm curious as to what seven cards would be used if the Horus engine wasn't in here. But as a Rescue Ace list, this is looking pretty good. I know this isn't exactly a budget build, but I feel like uh, going into the future, maybe instead of going Bonfire Populous, this may be a better route for, for the deck, maybe. I'm not saying that for, for, for definite, but I'm saying maybe it could be a cooler way to play Rescue Ace if you use Horus instead of Bonfire and Populous. See, and it's great that this is Shoe Ping too, because uh, Shoe Ping's a, a beast of a player. Like, I think he single-handedly started the Gizmek Uka tech, like Gizmek Uka in, into the barrier statues, but uh, not just the barrier statues, but because all the Rescue Ace have same attack and defense, you, you know, you can dig them out straight from deck. Um, if, you, if they have the same attribute, so you can win it in the mirror, or you can get some advantage in the mirror match. With a card like Gizmic Uka, and now I feel like uh, now the mirror match is a lot less consistent. Switching to um, stronger texts like Silent Graveyard or, or more generic texts like Silent Graveyard works a lot in his favor as well. And I think it's just really interesting to see how his tech game has evolved with the format. Secondly, um, Dragon Link made it. I can't say much about Dragon Link. I'm sure everyone knows how it works. Uh, triple Black Metal Dragon. This card's great. Uh, Safer is great. Levianir is crazy if it resolves. I faced Dragon Link in, in the last uh, regional that I went to, and I really only won because the dude misplayed, or I would have won, but time was called. But uh, it was really only because because the dude misplayed. But otherwise, I think he would have gotten the, the game three if he didn't misplay pretty hard. I think the deck still works, like there's nothing kind of 
I, I'm not seeing any any real spice in this deck other than Chaos Dragon Levianir, which may not have been played for a while, but I think it's seeing a lot more favor now, um, being able to hand loop the opponent because pr pretty much like half your deck is dark. The Scarlight's here for time, I'm guessing. Um, Droll in the side, Nib in the side. I don't think Nib is necessary this format. I'm gonna keep it real with you. If your deck is strong enough, you really don't need Nib. Uh, Droll is more than enough this format. DD Crow, yep. Not being once per turn is great. Pankatrops for breaking boards makes sense. Feather Duster is great. Um, and then Exceed Encore. I guess to just, this literally just has to be for Pearly. Like the hard tech for Pearly still exists, which is uh, kind of funny because I don't know. You just like, people just don't talk about Pearly that much. Like it's kind of just in the, it, it's in the format, but people aren't really talking about it. Everyone's more focused on like the sinful spoils decks and fire King and seeing a hard tech like this for Pearly probably means that it's like a bad matchup for him. I think uh, it's really interesting that Dragon Link can, can still get uh, good results, um, even even though I think a lot of people have stopped using this deck. But it, it's a very crafty deck. It's a very, like, it's a deck where it's like, you just have to get better as a player, and I'm sure you'll be able to, to top locals consistently with this deck. Um, so, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Also, because, you know, Branded Regain's fucking insane, so, yeah. Uh, that was the Philly Regional. I mean, uh, do, you, do you guys really need, want me to talk about Labyrinth? Uh, actually, you know what? Let me... Oh, we just know it's Labyrinth. We don't actually know the list. We uh, there, there's, there's, there's no list yet. Okay. So, I mean, Labyrinth's Labyrinth. Labyrinth's great. It's, it has a good matchup against Rescue Ace. And, uh, like, ever since they got Arius, the deck has just been insane. I don't know what Arius does for the deck that makes it feel so much better, but it just feels so much better. Um, or it just feels so much stronger now. So, yeah, um, I guess I'll be interested to see if, if, if there are any other interesting decks from, uh, the other players. I I'll guess I'll make another quick video, but otherwise, uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, this has been your boy Nisha here, signing out.